Hi everyone, it's Nathan here from Personal Best Physiotherapy in Wodonga. This is a video to uh, explain to people, um, patients, uh, about how we make a diagnosis. And I wanted to shoot this video because I had a couple of patients last week who asked me about their diagnosis and a couple of important points came up in relation to that um, that really I thought are worth um, mentioning and uh, so I'll put in a video. So the first point is that often when we see patients in our practice they are after a diagnosis uh, to help explain their pain and, and, what, and what's going on for them. And often what people initially are looking for is they are, they are looking for a structural problem. So they're looking for something like um, you know, something on an x-ray or an MRI, uh, something like that. So often involving imaging and a lot of patients feel that if they get the imaging and that shows something, then that gives them a reasonable uh, explanation for their problem. Unfortunately, there is a really big flaw uh, in that thinking process. And it is around the fact that there are, well, th th there's two, two reasons why, unfortunately, we can't always use imaging to make a clear diagnosis. And the, f the first one is that there are lots of false positives and false negatives associated with imaging. So we're talking about X-ray, ultrasound, MRI, CT scans. So what is a um, what's what's a false negative? A false negative is where, due to the restraints on technology, uh, and also the user of the technology that we don't always pick up a problem that is there. So no imaging is 100% is reliable. There is always a degree of error. So that means that in a small number of cases, you might have an ultrasound, for example, that says that um, everything looks normal in your shoulder. But then if you proceeded to have surgery and the, and the shoulder surgeon um, you know, pokes a camera in your shoulder, uh, they find that you do indeed have a problem. So that's a false negative, which means we can't put all of our reliance on the findings in an ultrasound um, or MRI. The other side of the equation is false positives. So false positives is where we see something on an MRI or an ultrasound or an X-ray um, but it's not actually the cause of your pain. And we know this happens because when we scan a large population of people, let's say we have 50 people over the age of 50, um, and none of them have shoulder pain, and we MRI all of them, then approximately 50% of those 50 people will have some sort of abnormality on MRI. But they have no shoulder pain, and they have no loss of function. So again, age-related changes that we see in imaging do not necessarily, they're not necessarily the cause of your current pain. So false negatives and false positives are a big problem in terms of imaging. <coughs> what this really means is that when we are making a diagnosis for your pain, we cannot rely on imaging alone we need to have a situation where your imaging marries up or matches with some other aspects, some other key findings. And in particular, they are your history and your physical examination. So when your history and your physical examination and your imaging all point to the same problem or all indicate the same problem, then we can be much more confident that that indeed is your problem. And in 
In medical terms, we call this convergence of evidence. So we're saying your history, your physical and your imaging all indicate that you have this problem. So therefore, <clears throat> you're quite likely that that is the problem. Where we have a mismatch, so the history doesn't match, the physical findings don't match, or the imaging doesn't match, we can't get those three things together in a triangle, then we have a problem we have to really check how confident are we about your diagnosis? <clears throat> and in some cases, we might need to get some other information um, to help us make that diagnosis. Or in some cases, what we do is we actually proceed with treatment. We say your history and your physical tell us that you have this problem, but your imaging doesn't. Are you prepared to proceed with some treatment for a period of time, maybe two weeks, four weeks, six weeks, and if you're getting better, that proves your diagnosis. If you're not getting better, we need to take some other course of action. So, they, uh, so that's just some information around making a diagnosis uh, that I thought would be helpful for you. Um, if you have any comments, please leave them below, and I'll talk to you again soon.